Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeff Sapelli. I'm the general manager for Walt Wines. It's a pleasure to be back on Instagram Live and I've got an incredible guest today that's joining us here from the Bay Area, a local person with lots of information about what's going on and lots of information about you know, what, is, what the shelter in place is and we might hear a little bit about his, his expertise from the different people he's talked to. But before I get to that, I just wanted to thank all of our club members, welcome all the new people who have, uh, who have stopped by to say hello, all the people who are logging in online. Um, we are really excited to be doing this virtual happy hour and we're gonna continue doing this virtual happy hour for the next three weeks on Instagram Live. So check us out on Walt Wines at four o'clock to see who we've got on. We've got a number of different guests coming and it's going to be super exciting. Before I get going though, I always like to thank um, our, the people on the front lines, the people that are really making a difference for us, um, from everyone from the, uh, the, the store clerks who are helping us to the different people who are uh, keeping us safe. I was at the winery the other day, it was super exciting, I got a chance to come say hi. I know that that, that comes with a certain level of protection, but it's nowhere near the amount of protection that our friends and family have to do. And so all I have to say is that there's lots of love in the air and we can't wait to have you come taste with us in Sonoma. Um, for those of you who are also looking for a chance to get the wines, we have some incredible uh, specials on waltwines.com. You can save 20% off on all the wines that we're tasting through these sips. Check out the schedule, get the wines, have them delivered. Everything's been going smooth so far, so we can't wait for you to try that. Um, but you know, without further ado, I have an incredible friend of mine, or at least he's become a friend of mine. He's, he's really been an inspiration for me as a young journalist, as someone who's been in, in the up and coming world of journalism. Um, his name is Kenny Choi, and he is the anchor for KPIX News. He's also a reporter. Um, Kenny, are you out there? Where are you at right now? I'm gonna try to actually go fetch you. How's that sound? There you are, I gotcha. My show, first time ever, we're gonna have a reporter being asked questions on, on Facebook Live. Hey, Kenny, how you doing? They're pretty good, are you sure you're not the news anchor? I just uh, just logged in right now and you're doing a fantastic job, Jeff. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, I, I, think think your picture, I think your picture's only cutting off at the, at the uh, chin, as the director would like to say, they wanna see your, your neck. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna sit up a little bit taller um, this is still, you know, in this day and age during this pandemic, we're still getting used to doing these Zoom interviews. Just uh -huh. three weeks ago, I was um, interviewing someone and I, this was maybe about a month and a half ago, actually. I, yeah. I, I, didn't not, I did not know how to record the Zoom interview, but hey, we're all uh, learning and adjusting. Yeah, I, I, have, I have never been on this before. That is true. for certain. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so I have learned. I was going to tell you. I didn't say this in the pre-show when we were getting yeah. together. But um, basically, if it wasn't for you and my friend James Partington, who's, uh, does, who produces the news for CNN, none of this would work. I would be <laughs> completely lost. I would have no idea how to shoot a camera angle, how to set up a, a, a you know, a light so that you can see my face. So uh, thank you. I, uh, I first met you in 2016 when you were just coming in and you were hosting yep. Barry of uh, Focus. Um, how's that road been for you? You came out of Honolulu, you were surfing, joined the Big Ten market of the San Francisco Bay. What's it been like? It's been awesome. Um, still, a, you never get used to the, the frigid cold waters of the Bay Area when you're surfing yeah. in 51 degrees you know the water's 51 degrees freezing you definitely have to get a wetsuit when i was in uh, hawaii i was just basically surfing um in my surf shorts and it was awesome oh yeah uh, 70 i think there was like a 20 degree difference in terms of the water temperature so it was nice and relaxing but still it's it's, it's a passion of mine i fell in love with surfing when i got to hawaii about 10 years ago and so i still try to go out i've got two kids now a six-year-old and a two-year-old so it's a little bit you know how it is. You've got you've got kids. Yes, I do. Uh, finding that hour of time or two hours or three hours, that block of time is a little bit difficult um, when the wife needs help at home. So whenever I can, I try to I try to hit the waters uh, here in the Bay Area, too. Well, I don't want to take any less time about pouring you a glass of wine because you've been working. I've been literally seeing you everywhere. Um, so. We do this game where we're gonna, I'm gonna pour you wine. This is gonna be a little mm -hmm. tricky because I'm gonna need you to raise your glass through the screen of Instagram and then I'm gonna pour it down, if that's all right. So I am ready. Just, all right, ready? And your arm goes up and the glass comes down. Oh. There you go, all right. There we Cheers go. Cheers to you, sir. Wonderful to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. 
So this is the 2017 Labrisa Pinot Noir. See if I get that in the, in the picture. This is a wine that's made from two different vineyards. Uh, but I wanted to keep going on your, on your conversation about, because uh, I teased it, and I saw Raj Mathai's on with us. So uh, <laughs> Raj. <laughs> Raj is out. Um, Raj. So, so uh, competing anchors, right, on, on, <laughs> on our Instagram feed today. Um, we all so love each other. We all love each other. So it's, 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 some, sometimes it's like anchor man, but, but uh -huh. most of the time, you know, we're competitive, but we love each other. Okay, is there is there a literal like you can't hurt, hit your face fight that you guys do with uh, for those of you who watched Anchorman? My oh guess my is goodness. no. There, there are no there are no there are no turf wars really. Um, okay, but it's it's fun. Raj and I I met Raj back in I think it was in two thousand three or two thousand four. I was in my first market in Washington State. Okay, it was my first market coming out of college. I was twenty something years old. Mm -hmm. And Raj, I guess, saw one of my uh, resume reels and he called me up and he said, hey, look, let, we'll fly you down to San Francisco for an interview. Um, I probably look like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I still do now. You still do. Yeah. But um, back then I was probably I probably looked like a, a teenager. Uh -huh. um, but Raj, you know, I, I loved I loved uh, visiting and, and getting to know him. And so it's good that he's uh, joining us today. Well, well, Raj is. Um is also saying that he hits you in the belly. So this is your opportunity because he cannot <laughs> say anything back in this, in this media. It's you and me. So if you have oh. anything you want to spill on Raj, you can, you can literally do that. <laughs> I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to see him at the next, uh, the Cabernet cook-off when we have it. Ah, yeah. We're going to get to that. So don't scoop my news. Yeah. If that's all right. Okay. Go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I wanted to dovetail something you were talking about, about the cold waters of the Pacific. Um, you're a, you're a surfer. Uh, La Brisa, if I come back again, it's primarily from uh, the Sonoma Coast region. It's from an area called the Petaluma Wind Gap. So this is a wine that is from two different vineyards, our Bob's Ranch Vineyard and the, uh, and the uh, uh, Gap's Crown Vineyard, which sits kind of eight miles due east of it. Both are situated in that wind gap where we get that really cold breeze from the bodega that cools everything down. It, it's a much cooler area than let's call it the Russian River Valley or even up into the Alexander Valley or the Dry Creek area. And it's because of those cold breezes that you really get this more intensity of flavors. You get chicks and hens, you get those little berries and those large berries that give it all the flavor di uh, diversity and also freshness and, and acidity. Um, but have you been out to the Bodega Bay yet? Have you been able to check that, uh, that break yet, Salmon Creek or anything? I haven't, I haven't surfed that break, but I have been in that area. You know, the oysters up there are, are excellent. They're awesome. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, so I have been up in that area, but never, I've eaten oysters up there, but never surfed uh, Bodega Bay. But I, I do want to. Maybe I'll take yep. you out, Jeff, one day. I know you're, you're, you, you've shown a little bit of interest in surfing. I love uh, the water and I am never, I've never stood on a board. So when I was yeah. in Santa Barbara, I, I would, uh, I'd wade my kayak onto a wave and piss off all the surfers. So um, <laughs> I, I'd love to do it. The president of the winery, Mike Reynolds, he, when he gets to Hawaii, he usually tries to paddle out a little bit. So yeah. I'm a game. If that's what you're saying, I, I'll figure out the wetsuit thing. It, it really is an amazing feeling when you're, when you're on the perfect wave. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that happened in Hawaii at this place called China Walls. And it, oh, okay. when the waves are, when it's perfect, when the, when the swell is coming in, it really does look like, like, like the Great Wall of China. And you That's always crazy. remember that perfect wave, kind of like when you remember that perfect glass of wine. And I remember when you guys came in and I tasted Hall for the first time, it was phenomenal. I haven't, you know, I haven't stopped drinking Hall wine and, and Wall wine. So it's, thanks for having me on today. You're, you're, you're doing a great job of it today. Thanks so much. So you did, yeah. you did mention, uh, so about joining us and we had you at the cook-off last year and mm -hmm. you were able to come up with your wife and I know you have two little kids now. And so just because, uh, just like everything else, we won't be hosting the big event, but what we decided to do this Saturday is on the Hall Wines Facebook feed, we're going to host the Cabernet Cook-Off where we have three judges that are, sorry, four judges, which I may be a judge. So if you know any, any of the background scoop, I can't hear it right now. And I know how you get about news. You're going to get that scoop. Um, but we're going to broadcast it on, on Facebook and um, it'll be a different experience, right? We, not everyone's going to be with us. It'll be um, us reaching out to the different people. You know, you've had to do that a lot through your professional career. Um, you've had, obviously, every day you're on the news. 
but now you're zooming more than probably ever in your interviews. Um, you know, how has that been going? Do you have any tips for us? Because again, I take everything that you do and I just replicate it. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> uh, thanks so much. Jeff. It, it really has changed uh, the way we broadcast news. I mean, two months ago, essentially, if you were assigned a story, you would head out there, you would plan it out, obviously, you know, set up an interview and you're very limited. There's all, you only have a few hours to work on a minute 30 piece that airs yep. during the, the broadcast. And so now the game has changed where you have to try to set up these Zoom interviews. But in a sense, it's actually the pieces that we are airing on Cape Cod X5 and, and CBS they they are they're better in a sense because you can if it whatever topic it is um you can actually get more perspectives you can you can mm -hmm. have different people who are all over the place i talked to i was doing this major league antibody study test um story yeah. and i interviewed uh the professor at stanford um then right after that i was interviewing the the person who was in charge of the lab in utah and then oh, i crazy. also got some local perspectives here and so um Pre-COVID, uh, I would not have been. Maybe I would have been able to interview the Stanford professor, but it would have been hard to to get the perspective from the lab person and from Major League Baseball. But now it's, you know, you're 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 playing this game where you have to try to to get everyone in a short amount of time, and it's possible. But yeah. certainly, um, and people are, are, I think, in a sense, more available too with Zoom. Yeah, I think I think you know what I've said uh, the last you know, two months we've been doing these shows. Yeah, I've, wine has taken me to some of the most beautiful places. I've had an incredible uh, opportunity through the career of wine to visit some of the mm -hmm. most spectacular, luxurious resorts to pour wine, to show wines to the Psalms and, and the wine buyers there. And now I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm on air with, with you live, you know, from your backyard in my backyard. And, uh, <laughs> and speaking of Major League Baseball, I'm going to have Alex Bregman on, on Thursday on our Facebook page. And there you go. I mean... I have no idea how I'm going to get these up and coming stars to come back. I don't know how I'm going to get you to come back and Alex to come <laughs> back, but if I could do it through zoom, we're going to keep doing these shows. So, yeah. Um, I, how about, so anything, what, what am I doing wrong? Is what is the biggest question I wanted to ask? Um, what, what, what interview tips do you have for me and how can I become a better uh, interviewer on, on this platform? Jeff, I think you know that you're you're you may be the next Cape Guy X five anchor, or <laughs> maybe even at the other competing station where Raj works. I'm uh, coming for you, Raj. Doing, or maybe even CNN because you have that connection there. Uh, I think you're doing fantastic. Uh, you know, you're a good listener. You ask good questions, and you know you're 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 very personable. So it's you're 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 doing you're doing fantastic. I don't have any tips really. I mean, I think I think you've nailed it. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna press you harder because that's what you do as an interviewer, ah, right? You, you not don't feel like you get the question. So what? Give me a. Um, you were looking for a question. You were looking for an answer. You knew they had the answer, but they weren't mm -hmm. answering your question. What's mm -hmm. the best way to break them? It's it's to ask it in a different way, uh, just as you did right now, and to keep pressing, right? And if it is especially if it, it depends okay. on the story, um, and if it's something, mm -hmm. a lot of times people. If it's, it's especially if it's a hard news story, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but you have to get the answer and you have you for me as a journalist, you want the the viewer uh, to get the answers and to get the information that they need. Um, and especially during a time like this, there's so many people right. who've been af affected and you want to make sure that you are getting the right answers from politicians, scientists. Um, and certainly that's part of of being a good journalist is asking the good questions and, and pressing just like you did <laughs> right back. So I give you a 10. I give you a 10. So let's, yeah. uh, so we'll dovetail out of, out of that and, and we'll do what's called the pivot, right? Um, yeah. Right. When they pivot away from the question and they bring you into a new subject. So um, sure. we have been um, working very hard on this one. And so I, I didn't want to, um, I don't have a good pivot out of hard questions <laughs> other than, um, you know, one of the questions a lot of people ask us is, so this is Bob's Ranch, and I'd love to pour you a glass of our flagship. Uh, this is, uh, Beautiful. we have obviously Catherine Hall. So if you've, hold on, and let me go ahead and ready. Here we go. Okay. And... Getting my second glass. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. Beautiful. And by the way, that first glass was excellent. Well, make Thoroughly sure. Thoroughly enjoying it, yeah. 
before I go, I want to pour you a little more because I want your wife to have some. So that's important that we keep our wives happy, right? She's so, actually, yeah, she's, she's upstairs right now taking care of the two kids. She had a full day of work. I've been with the kids since this morning at around 8 a.m. And good so for you. I've, I'm, in, I'm, I'm really enjoying this happy hour. And so I will, I will save, I will try to save her a glass. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. Well, if she doesn't, you know I, I will, I will, I will, I will. I think she's watching right now. So this is the, so obviously Bob's Ranch is named for Catherine's father. And we talked about the Petaluma Wind Wind Gap already and being a kind of a breezy place, as you can see a little behind me. So this is a, a, a field selection, a lot selection of that vineyard. It's broken up into blocks, which are, you know, individual different parts of the vineyard. And each one of those individual parts of the win vineyard either has a different type of clone. So think about a, um, an heirloom tomato where it has a purple tomato or a yellow tomato. They're both heirloom, but they're of this other they produce it slightly different fruit um, and then it what we do is we go through all of those blocks and we taste through all of those wines and when we're done we select the ones that are the most distinctive and we're looking for the ones that have a little bit more power a little bit more character lots of freshness big amounts of flavor and a lot of aromas in those wines and we're and those are the barrels that we select for bob's ranch which is named after Catherine's father which is the whole reason that we got into this so circling back to the the job as fathers is to insp inspire the women in our life um, you know <laughs> cheers to you and i'm interested in your take in this wine And you don't I have to be it. technical. I'm, I'm looking for yeah. your thoughts. And, and again, before I came to the Bay Area, I, of course, I enjoyed wine every once in a while. As soon as I took my first sip, um, I would get extremely red. I still get red now, yeah. but I, I do enjoy it. And I, the more I have wine, I, I, I feel like I, I don't get as red. But it's, again, yeah, I, I can't really get technical about it. I'm still learning a lot about wines, but that's mm -hmm. the beauty of wine is that there's so many options and, and when you taste a good wine, you just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you always remember. And, and certainly this one, I, I it's, it's excellent. Love yeah. It. For me, it's, um, it's that you, you, I thought you nailed the analogy perfectly. And by the way, uh, Ken, you're in San Francisco. Is that right? I am. We so are, you could be red just because this is one of the rare days in San Francisco where we get actually a lot of heat. So um, exactly. It's like, it's like 10 days out of the year, we get a ton of heat in San Francisco. Low um, 80s, which is which is crazy. We were at the beach yesterday. I, I am actually a little bit burned on the side because I didn't uh, put on uh, sunblock yesterday. And we were out uh, and about with the kids at the beach, social distancing, just ourselves. But yep. um, it, I, I didn't put on sunblock because I wanted I wanted the sun. <laughs> Mine's just the fact that it's 95 degrees in, in uh, Marin County right now. So yeah, I'm yeah. just. Yeah. But um, something that you said I thought was really it, 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 it was an analogy to me in my wine life, which was, you know, there's this moment where you have this perfect way and this, or this really great bottle of wine. And for me, it was a Pinot Noir. It was the Fox and um, Buenocito Pinot Noir, in fact. And so hi, Fox. And I just gave you a, a big spin. Um, <laughs> um, but for me, it was that wine. And that was the moment where I was like, I really enjoy these wines. I really enjoy tasting these wines. I want to learn more about them. And then you yeah. go forward with that. And I think that's what's fun about Bob's uh, for us is that because we get the 47 blocks of, well, it's not quite 47 blocks of Pinot Noir um, out in the vineyard. Every year, it's a kind of an adventure in, in that inspiration, looking for that perfect wave. We know the yeah. certain blocks tend to make wines that are better. And so those are the wines that, that tend to come in. So you go to the same break to find the same, um, to find the same wave, but it doesn't necessarily hit you in the same way because the storm or the yeah. swell may come a little differently, right? I don't know if that yeah. makes any sense to the surfer. It's, you, you hit it right on the head. Um, and, and every time, you, even if you go to the same spot every day, it is different, right? You're going you're gonna to see the different waves. If the sun's hitting in a different way, you're going to experience the wave in a little bit of a, a different way, the way the, uh, the swell comes in. So it's, it's different every time. And I think that the same goes for wine too, right? Like every year, you yeah. have different climates, different temperature, which can affect uh, the taste of wine. And so even if you're going to the same spot as a surfer, uh, it's different and you experience something, something new each time. Yeah. So it's beautiful. No, yeah. for sure. And just really quickly, for those of you who are checking in, I have Kenny from KPIX. Uh, he's here to talk about any questions you might have. So you've got that hard hitting question that you've been wanting to ask a journalist for years. I've got that available for you in the, in the lower box. So please uh, <laughs> fill that in. We've got a question that just came in. We'll get to in a second, but oh, I did yeah. want to, yeah, yeah, there you go. It's favorite it's place gonna... to surf. All right. We'll address that a little bit. Um, so we, but I, I, I just wanted to, to dovetail on what you said is, um, 
in my career, let's say I have an, an exceptional career in wine and I can do this. I've done this for 14 years and I can do this for the next 20 years. I would have 34 vintages, right? 30, you, as a winemaker, and I'm not a winemaker, but a winemaker has, you know, in a successful career, maybe 34 times to come up with the very best wine they have. And so it's this kind of rare opportunity we have once a year to come into it. Um, but, you know, we're going to go to bourbon keto, actually. And we're going to ask you more wine questions before we ask you more surfing questions. So, so tell us about your wine journey and how did it mm-hmm. evolve? And, okay. um, and it, is, it can be as short or as long as that wine journey has been. You know, it, it really, Jeff, before I came to the Bay Area, I mean, we had visited Napa when we visited uh, when we were as tourists. But mm-hmm. I really started falling in love with, with all the vineyards up there when we moved here about four years ago. And that's when I joined KPIX5. Yeah. And um, it's, so that's when my journey kind of began. And so I'm still, I guess, a, a novice, a beginner, um, finding kind of learning more about wines, but that's kind of when it, uh, when it began. And I, I just remember when you guys came in and I was like, wow, this is really, really, really great wine. Yeah, we were at the, uh, it was, we were doing the Barry focus shows in 2016. Mm-hmm. And I think we did the holiday show. I can't remember, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's literally yep. like a four minute, like hello. And in that time you and I had to get through like four wines. And it was yeah. just this kind of, boom, hi, who are you? What's your brand statement? And then drink. <laughs> so it, it does, it does fly. It does go yeah. by very quickly. Um, so hopefully now we all have more time. We're looking to hopefully um, open soon. So hopefully there'll be more time. I'm going to take the question from, from Jeff Postles. Uh, what's your best career interview? What's your most memorable interview? That's a good question. Um, the interview that I actually remember really well um it's because when i was an intern at kcal 9 mm-hmm. uh in los angeles uh this was when i was in college it was i was so nervous uh i i was actually in sports uh, in the sports working for the sports department oh okay. and so i started off my career as a sports broadcaster i spent um, several years doing that I before i shift that. pivoted before i pivoted into news uh-huh. and so i was um you know, I grew up playing baseball. I, I, you know, sports was my passion. So I started interning uh, at KCAL 9. And, and I remember uh, one of my mentors asking me, hey, do you want to come join me to go interview some of the Lakers, some of the Laker nice. players? Nice. And I, I said, of course, I'd, I'd love to. But, you know, I was certainly yeah. nervous. I'd never talked to any of these professionals. And, and so I'm sitting in this room. Uh, there's Kobe Bryant in one corner, Shaquille O'Neal on the other side. And I'm, you know, I've got the microphone. My mentor gave me the microphone and said, hey, go, go interview some of these guys. And mm-hmm. I'm just shaking. <laughs> um, right. I'm just, the, Shaquille, I'm looking up at him. Yeah, he's like seven this. something. Yeah, he's seven something. Kobe Bryant. These are, you know, stars I've never really mm-hmm. essentially met a celebrity before, before that point. And so I went to Shaquille O'Neal. He, he was a little bit busy. So then he actually sent me over to, he said, Kobe, we'll talk about this. And we were doing a story about, um, it was, the Lakers were uh, doing something really kind for right before the holidays for the kids, these uh-huh. um, these kids in this area. And so essentially I went to Kobe Bryant and started asking him about what the Lakers were doing, what it meant for him. And that was my first interview. And one of, I think the last time I saw Kobe Bryant, um, okay. so I'll always remember that. And he was so kind to me. He um, just treated me like and I, I'm sure he saw the nerves and he saw me shaking, but he he was so he was, he, he just ended the interview with a smile and then I felt, and he treated me like a professional reporter. And so yeah. that's the interview that I'll remember. I mean, I've, I've interviewed many other athletes mm-hmm. and, and celebrities after that, but that's the one that I'll probably remember for a while. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. That is a great, that's a great story. Uh, they, they used to practice at the, at UCSB where I went to college. And I remember the one day I, I worked in rec sports, so I got to go in and I mean, you know, Kobe, when you put him next to Shaq, you know, look short, but then you yeah. get in there and you're like, Oh my God, they're all just giants. And like, you know, <laughs> shake, you know, Shaquille's hand and it just like swallows your hand up. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know how you would keep going with an interview after that. Um, yeah, well, we did it, have, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, we had another question that came in and, and since you're not from the Bay area, what's your favorite thing about the Bay area? You know what I've really fallen in love with? I've, I love camping. Um, it's one way uh, for me, and there's so many great places here. Not just we we've gone to Yosemite several times uh, every year, except this year because of COVID. Yeah, we haven't I had mine to, canceled. 
Um, and it's and it's when you go there with friends and family, it's it's just an amazing experience. You you get to cook. You go hiking during the day, and you get yeah. to cook. You know you 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 fire up the um, you you get a fire going and and so I I, I just remember you know, taking my kids last year and, and I, during this pandemic, I, I miss that. Yeah. Um, I think there's so many amazing places to go. You, you don't have to go to Yosemite. You can go to all these state parks around here and it's limitless. Yeah. Um, and each time it's different. And so I've actually really fallen in love with, with camping. So when I got here, I had no camping gear and I've slowly kind of accumulated yeah. some more things, which makes the camping experience really great. When I first took mm -hmm. my parents, uh, four years ago, I didn't even have uh, sleeping pads, and so my parents were. Oh God! They, they, it was it was a disaster. My wife was <laughs> oh, like, no. never doing this again. Um, but then I slowly learned. You know, I, I started picking up um, the better equipment, and it makes the experience so much so much better. And so um, that's yes, it's it's been amazing. I don't pretend to be. I mean, I love the outdoors, but I don't pretend to be one of these like you know twenty mile you know and then hike or or you know camp on the edge of a wall kind of hike, kind of campers. <laughs> but it sounds like you and I can drink some wine and, and camp because the if I, as long as I got a pad and I can sit on it. Um, did, did you need some more? By the way, we can fill you back. Oh, up. sure, sure, sure. There, yes, there, always, there, there always. All right, it, there we go. A little more Bob's Ranch for you. There's not there much go. of it. We don't make a lot, so <laughs> fill it up as much as you can. There we um, go. So I, I I lost the other question, but I wanted to dovetail on the camping uh, story. Um, so we're, we're, the question we're asking ourselves right now is, what does travel look like? And um, we are about to open the tasting rooms. We're kind of grappling with um, how we're going to do it and, and how we're obviously going to be very safe and very sanitary. But you're more in tuned in the world than I am as far as um, what people are saying about travel. What do you see coming um, what do you, you know, what do you think is going to be, um, what do you think people are going to do, basically? Yeah. I'm just asking you your own opinion. Right. So, Jeff, I was up in Napa two days ago covering right. some of the restaurants that have reopened since um, full service is now allowed in Napa County. And so it was, it was quite interesting when I walked into one of the restaurants, uh, we talked to the, the manager there and, and it was com a completely different picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw, I, I went into the kitchen to see how things were going and, and you have these, these cooks and these chefs yeah. cooking with their rubber gloves on. And, yeah. and the manager was telling me that these chefs, it, it's difficult because they have their masks on, their yep. rubber gloves on, and it's hot in the kitchen right. to begin with. Right. And when they're touching these, these, these pans, it's, it, and when you're cooking, when you're chopping, yeah. um, I have to cook. When you're chopping, you 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 have you to do. have that. You need that to feel, feel with the blade. that knife, right? Yeah. And it, it's all it takes is like a millimeter off, and you and you could could be an accident. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's yeah. it's a challenge for them. But going back to your question, I think um, it's going to be a personal decision for each person. Um, mm -hmm. At the restaurant, I talked to some patrons who are so excited to be out and about once again. They certainly know the risks. They know the risks involved. But they also want to have that sense of normalcy, and that's certainly understandable. And yeah. so I think with travel is the same thing. Um, essentially, there's there's always going to be a risk, but it's it's about how comfortable you are, and some of the things you have to think about um, in this COVID world. Yeah, in, in the post pandemic, how do I do normal things? Yeah. Um, you know, like for me last week, I had the incredible opportunity to to get out on the golf course. <laughs> And yeah, felt nice. a little normal for a while, um, which was really yeah. nice to see. I can't think of a more uh, socially distant event than surfing. So I hope <laughs> that uh, you, you've, you've been out on the waves or you get out on the waves soon. I uh, wanted to give you an opportunity. I uh, wanted to thank you, first of all, for coming on the show. We're going to kind of run out of time here. I uh, wanted to see if you wanted to say anything before you go, if you had any hard-hitting questions for the wine industry before we sign off. <laughs> Well, first of all, uh, Jeff and, and everyone there, thank you for having me as a guest. It's been uh, such a pleasure. I was, uh, uh, my girl is actually, my daughter's actually out there waving at me. Um, it's been so yep. fun to be here. So thank you for having me as a guest and, and thinking of me. Uh, I did see a question from one of the, from one of our viewers asking me, where's my favorite uh -huh. spot in the Bay Area? Actually, my favorite spot is right under oh, the, yeah. the Golden Gate Bridge, which is Fort Point. And I go there every once in a while mm -hmm. when my wife allows me to. Um, and so it, that's actually one of my favorite spots. Uh, it, I don't do it often, um, with the kids and since it is kind of cold, but that's one of my favorite spots to go to, to surf. So yeah. thank you for having well, me. And I, 
and I love your Instagram. So I just wanted to say for those of you who um, are Thanks. checking out, if you want to check out a really cool Instagram with a lot of photos mm -hmm. about uh, surfing and whatnot, wow. I, I caught your surf uh, coming off the point at right at the Golden Gate Bridge. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Um, this is what I want to do when I'm surfing. So, hey, thanks so much for coming on. I wanted to say cheers to you and, and thank you. Um, for those of you who are um, going to tune in with us on Thursday, we have Alex Bregman from the Houston Astros coming on to talk about baseball, to talk about wine, to talk about life in the, in the, in the post-pandemic uh, post, uh, uh, baseball world. Um, that'll be a really cool conversation, and I'm humbled to have him on. Uh, Catherine's going to be back on on the Hall Wines Instagram tomorrow uh, tomorrow afternoon, so please make sure you stay tuned for that and check her out as she's coming to you live on Instagram. Um, Kenny, oh, and then, sorry, lastly, be sure to shop online at waltwines.com. We've got some great specials for you to sip along with. Uh, Kenny, thank you so much for, for having us. Cheers to you, man. I, I, I can't wait to see you soon and to talk to you soon in person. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Ken. Cheers.